unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Sweet as Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you were, you are brighter. Good 
with our human mind, God. Neither our human strength, God. Thank you.
I just saw us at 90. I, I just saw somebody. I just saw us at 90. And we were singing. Son, you say. Son, you say. Not this is in our body. Yes, we are Only pray here. No walking stick. No wheelchair. I just saw a spirit of death. Eh? On somebody just sleep. There's somebody in this building that they have been dreaming when they are dying. Eh? God delivers you now. With long life, he will satisfy you. He will satisfy you. He will satisfy you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Something is going to happen today. I'm not encouraging you. <laughs> no, I am telling you. Praise the Lord. We don't encourage like that. Praise the Lord. We tell. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's begin with the fifth verse. Give me the Amplified. Let's read. One, two, let's go. He says, For he, for he, for he, for ordained us, or rather, destined us, planned in love for us. To be adopted, that is revealed as his own children, through who? Jesus Christ. And what does the Bible say? Is according with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Firstly, not very clearly before I go any further, that God planned in love for us. Are you hearing me? He planned in love for us in accordance to the purpose of his will. Hallelujah. Let's go. Next verse. Next verse says, so that, okay, this is the reason why the plan took place. We might be to the suffering. We might be to the frustration. We might be to the sleeping hungry. We might be to the failing of marriage. We might be to having failed businesses. We might be frustrated. We might be to the devastation. We might be the scum of the earth. No, he said that we might be to the praise and to the commendation of his glorious grace, that is his favor and mercy, which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Somebody say, I'm among the beloved. <laughs> to the praise of his glory. What does the next verse say? The next verse says, in him, because of that praise, we have what? Redemption. That is, deliverance and salvation. In him, we have deliverance and salvation through his blood. And the remission, that is the forgiveness of our offenses, that is shortcomings and trespasses, in accordance with the riches, not your anger, in accordance with the riches, not your attitude. You see, some people's mercy, they think it's God's mercy. Do you understand? 
Because they kept you 17 times, the 18th time they said, we're not going to forgive you. They think that God's mercy is also the same. Now listen, he says, in him we have redemption. We have deliverance and we have salvation. Through his blood, the remission, that is forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings and trespasses, in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Give me the message version of that. I want you to read the message. Verse 7. Verse 7. He says, "Uh uh-huh, read. Because uh of the sacrifice of the Messiah. Listen. His blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We are what? Free people. Free of? And? Uh huh. Shocked upon by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either. Abundant. For who saw the sun sets free? Is free indeed. But one time I was telling people, the biggest problem in the body of Christ, are you hearing me, is for so long, men have been taught through their ideas. Through their ideas. A man gets born again. Are you hearing me? When they get born again, the primary place of ministry, the Bible says that as sincere babes desire the sincere milk. As babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you might grow therein. In other words, when somebody gets born again, the first thing they need is milk. Which is, the moment they get born again, we're supposed to take them through discipleship. In many of the churches across the world, you first make 40 day fasts. They starve babies. Do you understand? Because there's a seeking that wants to separate you, that God will deal with you as one which hears his voice. Because the primary distinction of every minister that appeals to the consciences of men as one speaking by God has one distinction. The revelation of Jesus. The Bible says that how I went up by revelation. He says, this gospel was not taught unto me by any man, but even as it was revealed by the revelation of Jesus Christ. As Christ was revealed, Paul wrote the gospel. As he delved deep in the revelation of the Christ, Paul wrote the gospel. I'm not talking about digging deep to know what is happening in your life and where your family, which is okay. I'm talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. When I came, you see, let me tell you something. When the Bible says that all scripture is profitable, amazingly, the root word, in fact, the original manuscript doesn't say all scripture. The original manuscript says every scripture is profitable. Every scripture is profitable. That is the power of the word. The power of the word is not even in the place where the man must understand the concept in which the Lord spoke. No. The power of the word even supersedes what men understand. The power of the word comes in its own efficacy. What Colossians 1, 6 says. He says that this gospel was preached to you. Even as the same gospel which was preached across the world. He says that that gospel beareth fruit. That word beareth fruit. He says which has come to you. Indeed in the whole world. That gospel is bearing fruit. And still is growing by your prayers, by your fasting, by going on prayer mountain and giving too much. No. He says by its own inherent power, even as it has done among us yourselves, ever since the day you first heard and came to know and understand the grace of God in truth. He says you came to know the grace or undeserved favor of God in reality deeply and clearly and roughly becoming accurately and intimately acquainted with it. The moment it came in your spirit, he says that word started to bear fruit from the day you understood grace. That means when a man understands grace they stop doing the word. The word starts doing them. So it enters in you. Before you know it, you find a lame guy and you say, uh-uh, get up. Not by you, but by that word which is inside you. He says that word bears fruit. It bears fruit. It bears fruit. Let me, when the Bible says men die because they lack knowledge, men die because they lack knowledge, Period.
One time, somebody came to me and asked me, how do you, you know our first meeting started 1,200. Somebody asked me, is it godly? There is something not godly. You get it? Do you understand? I thought the minister would have been humble to ask. No, he judged. You get my point? Do you understand? And I told the brother, I told him, you see, I didn't explain further, but I told him, you see, there is something about, there are about five principles in ministry. Okay? But there is one principle that works across everywhere, whether it's business or work, anything. The very spirit of increase and multiplication. Whether you're doing a business or whatever you're doing, the very spirit of increase and multiplication. That's a testimony. It has a certain message. When a man understands that message and is fully acquainted to it, there is no way he won't multiply. You remember the book of Acts 13? The Bible says that Paul went to preach. They sat in the synagogue after they were separated. You understand? You remember the work? The work was separate with Paul, Sorry, Barnabas and Saul for the work of ministry. And forth they went. And the Bible says that they started to preach the gospel. Are you hearing me? And then they, if you read those words very intricately and study them, you'd understand the kind of message I'm talking about. Now I can't share this kind of thing in a congregation like this, but in a minister's conference, I would be glad to share. But if you go in the last verses down there, he says that when they had these things, the Bible says, the Gentiles besought Paul <laughs> that he speak what? These words again, the next what? Sabbath. You remember? Can you give me that scripture? He says that when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached unto them the next day. Give me the message. Give me the message. Give me the message. He says, uh-huh. when the service was over, he says, Paul and Barnabas, now, that's the place. See, read from Acts 13, from the beginning of verse 2, you realize the separation was Saul and Barnabas. But there was a transition in the life of Saul by reason of the message in that particular chapter that, you see, people think Paul became Paul on conversion. No, Paul did not become Paul on conversion. There was a point where he was born again, but he was still Saul. You get it? That's why the Bible says, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said unto them, separate me Barnabas and Saul. The spirit was not stupid. He knew the point by which Saul became Paul, and at a particular point changed from Barnabas and Saul to Paul and Barnabas. The place where even the position switched from Barnabas coming before Saul to firstly Saul becoming Paul, and then Paul becoming before Barnabas. And if you read that chapter, you realize there is something about the message when it came out of the spirit of Paul. It changed. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says, and when the service was over, now Paul and Barnabas, it has changed from Barnabas and that, that I wish I was speaking to only ministers. I would go deep into the whole message to explain it. Because you see, there are messages that can't work. They just don't work. That's why some of you, the way you work, you've been to church every day. They pray fast, cast out devils out of you. They, they, you've, not, you've been everywhere. If they are apostles, you know a hundred. If they are prophets, you've gone everywhere. If they are teachers, you know teachers. If they, you've been everywhere, but you don't see answers. Why? Because you, you don't understand the message. That is why in 42, after Paul spoke that message, God changed his dispensation in the spirit and changed him from Saul to Paul. But Christians don't see it. They don't see the place where the man was translated. Now, in the morning, the Bible says when the service was over, it was no longer Barnabas and Saul. It had become Paul after that separation. Again, you realize that there is a particular order, a certain submission, a conviction by the prophets, which are Antioch and the prophet teachers, not the ones you find in Judea. Because Judea prophets don't understand calling. They only know need. You can get a car and a husband, but you can't know what God called you to do. But you see, when you explain it, some people think you're against prophecy. You get it? It's not so. It's not so. Okay, after you get the husband, uh-huh. What next? That is where prophecy, that's why I tell people, prophecy, we prophesied. Weren't you here in the prophetic meetings? Didn't we prophesy? Wasn't I prophesying on these prophecies? 
Did I see the spirit? I do. But see, there's a place where the prophet perfects the saints for the work of ministry. To the edification of the body. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Not just to say, I see your car. You see, that's wonderful. And we see in your lives, individually. You guys know that, don't you? But you see, more than that, what about the apostle in you? What about the prophet in you? What about the healing machine in you? What about the revivalist in you? What about the businessman who is supposed to change the church? What about that? You get it? But you see, there's a place where that transition comes and the one at Antioch has to commit such one as Saul and Barnabas. And after the sermon, Paul, Saul had become Paul. And the Bible says in the next, the service was over, Paul and what? Barnabas were invited back to preach again the next Sabbath. Listen what happened. And the meeting broke up. A good many Jews and converts to Judaism went along with Paul and Barnabas who urged them long in the conversations to stick with what they had started. This living in by the law. By the what? God's grace. What happens to the next verse? The next verse says, the next Sabbath came around practically. The whole city showed up at Fanero. the word. They didn't show us. They didn't come to see the men walking. No. The Bible says, they showed up to hear the word. And somebody says, ah, that is, mm -mm, I don't believe that spirit. (laughs) Okay, stay in the synagogue. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's the scripture in, my, in, 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 in the prophet. The prophet says in Amos, he says, in that day I shall cause. Who is causing the famine? God. Not the devil. Uh-uh. He says, behold the days come, says the Lord God. He says that I will send. This is God. He's sending a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing. There was a time we didn't care about words in church. The people can come and say, ah, me, if they do worship, I can go. Me, I used to love worship in church. And then when they finish worship, I get, my, I get my spiritual switch and I switch it off. And perhaps I sleep until the end of service when they bring back worship and I switch back on. But now, God has started to send the semi. He says it's not of bread or water. No. Men just want to hear the words of God. There are people, God, for them, they, they are there, but they want... They, you understand? Let me tell you. Thank God Uganda grew very fast. If you've been in the church in Uganda for 10 years, you've literally had everything a human mind has. We got to a place, some of you don't understand, where we could predict a preacher. The preacher begins from Jonah and we know where he's going. <laughs> he even meets court seat. And you know it's wrong. There was a time when no man in the pew could judge a man on the altar. Not because they were humble, but because they were more indifferent than the men on the altars. Now, he said, I shall feed my sheep. These days, God doesn't wait for men of God to preach. No. Guys are in their beds, and God starts to speak to them. There is a woman in this building. She has never been on the pulpit. You might not know her very well, but oh boy, she knows God. And thank God our generation is educated. The past move, there were men who were not educated. People never went to school. They used to say, You understand? But now guys have PhDs. They have master's degrees. They have doctorates. And they are deep. They are deep. Yes. And we worked. I was banking and raising dead men. Because we can do all things by Christ which strengthens us. The 
the Bible says that everything that may be known of him has been... Oh, 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 oh. The Bible says that everything that may be known of God has been made manifest in them. Who is God? Is he a healer? It's showing in them. Is he wise? It's showing in them. Is he beautiful? It's showing in them. Is he tall? It's showing in them. Is he anointed? It's showing in them. Is he glorious? He says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. I wish you understand me. Everything we know of God is manifest in you. It's not seated in you. No. He says, because God has showed it unto them. Because they function in the spirit of revelation. Because they function in the spirit of revelation. Everything the Lord reveals starts to work in their lives. So that when men see them, they don't see them as children of God. No, they see God working in them. You see, some people, some people have a problem when we say ye are gods. But do they read that scripture? The Bible says, that which may be known of God. What is known of God? What do you know about God? You tell me one thing you know about God. He's mighty. It is manifest in you. He's rich. It is manifest in you. He's healthy. I don't understand a Christian who fears witchcraft. Have you ever seen God lose appetite because they put stuff on his house? Have you ever seen Lord God lose sleep because they put something behind his toilet? Come on, child of God! Everything that may be known of him is manifest in you. Everything. What do we know about God? God is big. Woman, you're big. God is mighty. Woman, there is might in you. God is wise. Brother, there is wisdom in you. God is glorious. Brother, there is glory in you. God is anointed. Brother, you, there is an anointing in you. Everything that should be known of God... Is manifesting you. You're not believing for its manifestation. Uh -uh. So do you understand where Fanelo comes from? We are simply the manifestation of everything known about God. So that when a man says, when I cut on our phone and out here. When I cut on our phone and out here. If you have seen me. <laughs> oh God, how does God think? Look at me. How does God work? Look at me. How does God answer? Look at me. How does God operate? Look at me. Some people, they are saying that they are, they are like God. Okay. Listen. Listen. Let me help somebody. A man told a lie in the scriptures. And he was told, you are of your father, the devil. Stanya Zala. Because according to the scripture, Zala. A man lied. And they told him, you are of your father, the devil. He just told a lie. He didn't do anything. No. He says, you are of your... He didn't... He just said, you are of your father, the devil. He just lied. And he, he immediately inherited DNA son. The devil. Then you say the truth. You are of your father who? Uh -uh, you are of your father who? <laughs> Somebody laugh at the devil. Listen, you are a child of the Most High. 
the very DNA in Jehovah God is the very DNA in you. Abo Uganda yesu we wate ba muta kako trip. Toge na nga trip. If you have never seen Jesus with a drip, say in the name of Jesus, I won't get a drip on my hand. Smith Wigglesworth started to, he got what? Stones, eh? You remember? Kidney stones. And he, he went and the doctors told him the only way we can heal you is by operation. He asked them, have you ever seen Jesus on an operation table? And the doctor said, what do you mean? He says, and this is love made perfect. That we might have confidence on that day when the doctor says you have cancer. On that day when the doctor says you have HIV. On that day when the doctor says you have an incurable disease. For as he is, so are we. Unless you're not, listen, tell your neighbor, I'm not going to die now. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to die now. It doesn't matter what the doctor said. It doesn't matter what the akataya. This is eternal life. That they might know. Listen. That they might know. This is eternal life. That they might know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. What is eternal life? That they might know the one true God and His Son. Then the man worsens it and he says, this is the record that we have eternal life. This is the record that we have eternal life. This is eternal life that they might know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. In other words, this is the record that you have everything a man needs to know about God. You have everything a man needs to know about Jesus. If a man wants to know Jesus, they just look at you. I'm very serious. How do you understand who we are? Do you understand who you are? You want to walk a normal life, live a normal life, sleep a normal way. I refuse. Me, I refuse to be normal. I refuse to be predictable. That is why the next group of ministers and Christians, the world is in trouble. Let me tell you. Because God is raising people you can't predict. You understand? If the Bible says, said as he was, I would be okay. The Bible said as he is. Did not the Lord Jesus, before he left, pass through a wall? Somebody has said I did. <laughs> Can cancer kill that kind of body? You know, one time I asked the person, do you know that it's the devil's thoughts to make it robbery? You see, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus found it no robbery. Do you know, some people, it is robbery to be a child of God, to carry the seed of God. But, you understand, the other day I was switching on my radio, and I was putting on a Christian radio, and then this guy is singing, I'm only human, I just switched off. <laughs> Me, I'm not only human. Uh-uh. There's something. There's something. There's something. You remember in Matthew 9, 13? Let me show you how deadly you are. I think it's Matthew 9, somewhere. 
He spoke of uh, something in Matthew 9 somewhere. Where he says, you can't put new wine. <laughs> in old what? Wine skins. List. The Bible says, the bottles what? You see, if that's an experience of a new creature, you must understand what God had to do to put the Spirit in you. Even the bottle changed. When the Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was no more. If you read the Hebrew word, it translates like he tried to be born again. He tried to walk a born again man's life. And he was no more. Because the glory of new wine is so big to be contained in an old bottle. <laughs> Some of you think when you became born again, you maintained old bottles. Tell your neighbor the bottle changed. Tell them the bottle changed. Whether you want it or not, something took place in your body when you received the Holy Ghost. This blood that flows in your veins is no longer... A Kamoka's blood. That's why when he looked at you, he called you his body. He claimed you, my body. And if he says you are the body, let me ask, do we regard any man in the flesh? He says, even the Christ. The Bible says, we know him not henceforth. In the flesh. So, when he says you're my body, he actually doesn't mean body flesh. He talks body spirit. What entered you could not stand a certain bottle. That bottle, that bottle would explode. Do you know what it means to carry God? A hundred percent God. Mystery hid from the ages past and now revealed. Which is Christ in us. The hope of glory. But that very Christ, the Bible says, it pleased the Father that in Him should dwell all the fullness of God bodily. All the fullness of God bodily in the Christ. And when it entered Him like this, He says, I in them. And you in me. That we might be one. That the world will know that you are. Sent me and have loved them. Do you know the love of God is the place where we were reconciled? Let me tell you. Some of you, okay, let's begin from 21, eh? 21, 22. Eh? Let me show you the paradox. That they may all be what? Here is the paradox. As thou, Father, art in me. Listen, and I in thee, listen, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That was a place, the primary place, was when they entered the Christ and the Christ in God. That's why Job says, am I a well? Oh, am I a, am I, am I a well? Oh, am I? Yes. And the answer is simple, Job. You're none. But if I ask that, Christ, that question to a Christian, are you a C? You're both. How? Because in the first place, let's go back, 21, 20. He says, that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me. I, in thee, this is Jesus in God, okay? I, in thee, uh -huh. That they may all be one. That's 21, okay? As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. Wait. I 
in thee. Who is in the, in the Father? Christ. That they may also be one in us. Are you hearing? So, there is a, there is a paradox of the Christ being in the Father and you being in the Christ. And then you make one. That's only to cause the world to believe. You get it? Do you see? That is, that is the well in the sea. Eh? You in Christ. Christ in the Father. That you may be one. That means you're hid in Christ. And Christ in God. Paul gave that experience. But then after that, there is a certain consecration that takes place. That is why in the next verse he speaks of my glory. He says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So when the Christ transferred glory, the transaction changed. Okay, this is what happened. You were in Christ and Christ in God. Christ gave you glory. Are you hearing me? When, when they received the glory, the Bible says, now they switch the other side. And then the Bible says, Christ says, I in them. Thou in me, that they may be made what? Oh, <laughs> Masatala Barasteke. And the Bible says, and that the world may know that thou hast set me, comma, like the first one, and thou hast loved them as thou loved me. That means that the glorious testimony of the love of God was to give you a glory that flipped you outside Christ and Christ now flips inside you and God in you. And everything that may be known of God is manifest, not to them, in them. In them. For God has showed it to them. And the next verse says, uh -huh, For the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Don't, that you don't have any excuse to live a glorious life. Even if you say, me, I would have lived a glorious life, but in our family, shut up. Family changed. You are in Christ. Christ is in God. He gives you a glory that flips you out and he enters you and God in him. Now, Jesus is in you. Jehovah God is in you. And then a dog bites. Rah! Then he says, eh. I was told of a story of Apollo Chivevulai. He was going to preach, and a lion came and roared. Rah! And he told the lion in tongues, he said, Rima Shakarabasata. Bisekele. The thing went away. I think he was telling it, Gwe, how can you bark at your home? Have you forgotten I'm your kind? The Bible says that the prince of this world has nothing. He, listen, that is why the next verse, if you go back to where I was, I was sharing, he spoke of the experience of, let's go back to the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, where I began from Ephesians. Okay, I want to finish. Ephesians. Uh -huh. He says, in him we have what? The redemption, deliverance and salvation through his word. And he says, the remission or forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his favor. Look at the next blessing. He says, which he has lavished upon us in every... Listen, that love was translated to wisdom and understanding. In fact, when you read this, the word, you have to realize... 
it's as in every kind of Sophia and phronesis. Phronesis is the Greek word, understanding, is the Greek word that translates as determining the mode of action, sorry, to take in any circumstance because you know its end. In other words, when the Christ is functioning under phronesis, he knows the end of the blind man to see. But he can determine the mode of action. And he says, no, let me spit on the ground. And put it on his ears. That is why if you're here in the healing meetings, if you remember, eh? <laughs> you realize we're functioning under phronesis. You put hankies on the sick. That was the very mystery that used to heal with Peter's shadow. Phronesis in him created a critical mind in him to determine that my shadow should heal. And when he had that wisdom and understanding, immediately his shadow could heal. Listen. It's phronesis to leave an anointing in a hanky to go and heal a sick man. It's phronesis to talk to your shadow and transfer the anointing in it. Some of you have seen me cast out devils by looking at people. I tell a guy, look at me, and the demon starts. You get it? Now, as you continue to grow in God, you can exercise a deeper level of phronesis, which is, now, me, I'm working on this. When I get in a plane and somebody is dying, they'll be healed. That's what I'm meditating now. <laughs> I wish you understand what I'm saying. He says, because of that love, he has abounded to us in all Sophia and phronesis. He has abounded. He has overflowed the opportunity for us to determine the mode of action for everything in whose end we see. A woman just testified to me a few minutes ago her marriage failed. And somebody told her, Go and meet Apostle Grace. She came. Then she was expecting me to prophesy. And then I told her, It is well. I just said that. For nurses. Because I could see the end thereof and I said, now, which direction should I take? Should we first visit her cousin's uncle such that we know how to deliver her? Oh, when I say it is well, it is. And I just said it is well. And she was testifying and saying, man, God is sorting stuff. You understand? I didn't need to first say, I see. You see, even if I didn't say, for nurses has taught me that I can determine the mode of action because I've beheld the end in sight. In other words, if I can see that the healing is going to take place, even if I blown the individual, they will be healed. Even if I hit them with this hanky. All of that is just phronesis. The end line is healing. I have beheld it. But the eyes by which the wisdom of God causes you to see the finished work. You see, when Christ was on the cross and he said it is finished, he didn't just say your job is finished or your marriage is finished to be sorted. No, no, no. There was, the finishing was he. When he said it is finished, he literally introduced the church to the grace of phronesis. We don't enter war without the knowledge of how it will end. No. We enter war when we know how it's going to end. Some of us are quiet. We're just not stupid. We are waging war that way. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when a man has that wisdom, you can even determine how to fix your business. How to fix your marriage. How to fix your child. How to fix things that are surrounding you. You just determine how. Why? Because you know the end in sight. And you want to determine. Imagine, if you carry the phronesis that your business is going to be sorted on Tuesday. You understand? You can say, I'm going to walk to this place on Tuesday and this answer is going to come. Why? Because you beheld the end in sight. It's like going, God showing you a whole football match. And it tells you how they are going to score. And then you start saying, Neymar is going to score the first goal. Lionel Messi is going to score too. Then Carlos Puyol is going to give the third assist. And then Gould is going to score. You understand? Why? Because see your end. The diff that's the difference between you and Joe. That is why when Paul is teaching the church, okay? Or, sorry, James. When he's teaching the church, he says, For we know the sufferings of our brother Joe. And he didn't say, and his end. No, he says, take my brethren, the prophets, okay, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and affliction of patience. Uh -huh. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job. 
Look at how James sees it. And we have seen the end of Job. No, he says we've seen the end of the Lord. I know you're going through situations. But your end is of the Lord. 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 We, the Bible in James did not behold the end of James. No, the Bible beheld the end of the Lord. In other words, everything you're going, you're going through right now has the end. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Give me the message of that. He says, what a gift life is to those who stay. The course, the course, sorry. He says, you've heard of the course, of course, of Job's staying power. And you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. That's because God cares and cares right down to the last detail. People will look at you and they say, God cares for that guy. Let me tell you, there is nothing you're going through that is not going to end with God. Your end is of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, my end is of the Lord. You'll finish well. I know you will finish well. Why? Because Jesus said it is finished. And he was the one at the end. And the Bible calls him the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. The present and the future. Your helper in ages past. Your hope in years to come. Listen, you will finish well. Nothing should threaten you. Nothing. Now, by phronesis, we've beheld the end. Everything I'm in, there's a certain story of how it's going to end. And when it ends, men will say, this God is rich in mercy and pitiful. People are not going to say, let me tell you, people are not going to say, see that man worshipped God, he loved him, but he finished badly. No. Me, I saw my end. I am going to finish well. Go on, if you don't finish well, but me, I'm going to finish well. And my end is of the Lord. Some of you on your tombstones, they'll put, His end was of the Lord. Put it in your will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, He says, He has abounded to us in all Sophia, which is the wisdom of God, and promises, okay? The practical insight and prudence. And the next verse says, uh huh, making known unto us, listen, the mystery, that is the secret. Of his will, of his plan, or his purpose. And it is this, in accordance, sorry, it's in accordance with his good pleasure, his merciful intention, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him. In other words, every Christian doesn't, listen, I have heard Christians say, let us seek the will of God. Listen, he has made known to you the mystery of his will. So somebody says, how do I know she's my wife? You know. You ask people who are married, when you ask them, how did you know she was your wife? All married people say, you just know. So if you don't let know, she's not the one. He is not. You know. Tell your neighbor, you just know. What? When you get to that job and it's your deal, you will know it's your deal. When it's your part, listen, it's yours. When you step on a plot of land and it is yours, you will know this. This one is mine. It's even screaming, Daddy, Daddy. Da-. Tell your neighbor, I know what's mine. Tell him, I know what's mine. Because he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. You're not believing to know God's will. No. He has made known it to you. How? By Sophia, all the wisdom of God, because Sophia is the wisdom of God. You carry the wisdom of God. How can God not know? Now if he does, and you carry his wisdom, you also know. Apostle, what am I going to do? Some of them I tell them, you know what to do. Now, Apostle, 
you are complicating things. And I tell him, you don't understand. I, I don't want to spoil you because spoiling you means I'm going to try to make you think that me I know and you don't. So that you always knock on my door to know. Yet you know. In other words, if you have not yet figured it out, you will figure it out. I know how I'm going to end. Me I know. I know. I know. Tell your name, I know. Sometimes there are people who want to make you think you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Young man, no, me, I know. I know what I'm doing. I know. It's not pride. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I know. I know. But you don't know. Me, I know. Because the last said, whatever will be, will be was a Nazareth song. We are past Nazareth. We are not whatever will be, will be. No. Listen, I know what I will be. Tell your neighbor, I know what I will be. Because he made known unto us the mystery of his will. I know. You get my point? I know. So somebody asks me, so then how do you know? Very simple. Whatsoever things. <laughs> Give me the message version of that. He says, finally. Finally. Put your name. Summing it all up, friends. I would say, you will do best by feeling your mind. Tell your neighbor, feel your mind. Mugambe, feel. Tell your neighbor, feel your mind. Tell your neighbor, feel your mind. He says, summing it all up, friends. Let's read. I would say you'll do best by feeling your mind. And what? Meditating on things true. Uh-huh. Noble. Uh-huh. Reputable. Uh-huh. Authentic. Uh-huh. Compelling. Uh-huh. Gracious. Uh-huh. The best. Uh-huh. Not the worst. Uh-huh. The beautiful. Uh-huh. Not the ugly. Uh-huh. Things to praise. Not things to... You have a curse. You have a generational curse. Your father has a curse. From your family's father's curse. Shut up! And the next verse says, listen. <laughs> Put into practice what you learned from me. What you've heard and saw and realized. Do that. And God, who makes everything work together, will work you all into his most excellent harmonies. Tell your neighbor, God is working me. Put it on your WhatsApp wall and say, God is working me. Do we have another verse? Oh, we finish. He said he will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Says that when somebody says, What is your future? I know. Why? Because I take time to feel. Let me tell you, when I was in university, second year, I used to meditate for Nero. Second year. And then I lock myself up in the hostel. Boah. Apostle Michael, you're among the first people I preached to you. Do you remember me mentioning the people in America watching us right now? You remember those days? I started those things when I was still in hostel. Boah. Feeling my mind. And meditating very. And I stand in places and I see people who are full. Choir sing for me this song. Increase the volume on the piano. Listen. Sit in a mobile money kiosk like you're sitting in a supermarket. Count 30,000 shillings like you're counting dollars. Me, I started with papers and leaves. I don't want to tell you which age I stopped counting leaves. But it was a bit more adult than you expect. I used to pick 
trees. I mean, leaves. We used to have a, a tree of an at home. We have it. So these things which people ship, I would get them. <laughs> and then I see nobody's watching me. Then I get rubber band. Childlike faith. Then I put one bundle there. <laughs> Whatever things. If your stepmother says, you will never get married. That day, buy a gown. Put it on. With high heels. And start to... Whatever things are lovely. You guys were not there. You were not there. When we used to hold sticks. You're pressing the remote of your car. What you You were not there. That is why the Bible says, if you're serious, <laughs> the message person says, if you're serious, give me that scripture, she's there, raise me. If you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act, 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 act. act. You'll see how God will answer you in the most present. The most, his most, he will work you into his most excellent harmonies. I used to sit in a hostel and then I say, thank God, thousands have come. They're listening to the word of God. Who has been healed? Tell me. Then another. Who has, aren't you seeing them in Healing Chronicles? Hey, this one came with a broken back. This one left a clutch, you understand? But there was a time when nobody believed. And you're alone in that dress, that room, and you're preaching. I used to speak to mirrors. I used to thank myself for preaching. Then I come in front of the mirror, and I say, Papa, thank you for preaching. Then in the end I say, yeah, no, glory to God. Glory to God. Enter that small business of yours and start to thank God. And say, God, I thank you. Because this is a profit-making company. This is one of the most influential chain link cafes in the whole world. Hallelujah. Me I used to always tell myself, I'm the deepest preacher on earth. Now you, you might also be a preacher. Nainga, you're not deep. Me have claimed my... The vacuum is big for any one of us. Even if you claim it, you'll join the league. My God. My God. Whatever things. It me when people come for counseling and say, I have failed. I don't know how to. You failed. How can you fail? How did it enter your mind that you're ugly? Some kid told me, Apostle, pray for me. My nose is big. I told her, eh, I've just realized now. I didn't know it was big. In other words, me, I don't think ugly. Come on. Get to your feet. I want you to speak something from your mind. Get something in your mind, speak it. That's the mystery of his will. Here, Baba. Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven up above the Some power, love our God. I live strong today. Oh, is an awesome God He reigns from heaven up above what are you thinking? 
Speak in other tongues. Oh, from heaven and earth. Oh, he reigns. Yes, he reigns. What are you thinking? I think you're a success. I think you're blessed. I think you're big. I think you're anointed. I think you're glorious. I think you're increasing. I think you're multiplying. I think you can't fail. I think you can't be slowed down. I think nothing can fail you. I think you can get up. I think you restore. upon your life that you know the will of God concerning your life that you think only good things the perfect and the best no curse only blessing your children are going to set this world they shall be for signs they shall be for wonders they will be potent wherever they go in every nation you will step. You will be another story. In every district, you will go. You will be above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Great is he that is in you than the devil in the world. The lines are fallen unto you in pleasant places. You have a godly heritage. You can't fail. You can't fail. You can't fail. Your end is of the Lord. I say it, your end is of the Lord. There are people who say it, who think, who assume that your end is of men. But I decree upon your life, you are about to disprove them. You are about to surprise them. You are about to shock them. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hey! Tell your neighbor I'm a shocker. Tell your neighbor I'm a shocker. I'm unpredictable. I surprise. I do the unthinkable. I do the unimaginable. I'm writing history. Every day. Tell your neighbor I'm different from what you think. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My end is of the Lord. Tell him my end is of the Lord. Listen. As you spoke. God was working you. Into his excellent harmonies. Hallelujah. Listen, I need a minute of your time. Is there anybody here and you say, I want to give my life to Christ. I'm not born again. I want to be born again. Join us. Put up your hand. Put up your hand. Put up your hand. And say, I want Jesus today. Put up your hand straight. God bless you. I see a hand behind. God bless you. I see another one up there. God bless you. There's another one there. God bless you. There's another one there. God bless you. There's another one there. God bless you. There's one there. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart 
that you died and rose again. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Tonight, I'm born again. Amen. And the grace of oh, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.